Something that I like to do, even though I might step away from my piece, is to come back and play around with it, which is one of the great things about Procreate. You might be done, but you might have an idea of something that you want to try, and it's really easy to jump back in. So let's put a little bit of light and shadow and see if that changes our already beautiful piece. Since we worked on all sorts of different images and brought them all together, something that's really important for me is to have a cohesive final piece. And sometimes that requires me making sure that the palette is the same, the textures are the same, or it can be as simple as finding a light source and creating some light and shadow with all of the creatures in our scene. I'm gonna create a new layer on top I might want it, I might not want it, and grab something light, maybe yellow, maybe white, or a little bit of blue since it's underwater, and think about where this light is going to be. My piece is really jellyfish heavy. I really love that being the focal point, and it already has a light source and kind of works with this gradient too. So in my mind, I'm going to say that light source is coming from here, just like this jellyfish. So I'm going to make sure that I have the brush that I want. I wanna go for something soft. I'll stick to my soft brush or a little bit smaller. Bring down that opacity. You really don't need very much to sell the idea of where the light's coming from. Going back to my soft brush. So if my light is coming from here, then I want to bring a little bit of light all the way down on my scene. So it almost looks like it's just peeking out, like there's a little bit of sun peeking out, which means that any creature on this side should get a little bit of a highlight too. I'm gonna go ahead and just create that into another layer. I might not like it, so I just want to make sure that I can go back and We'll do something small, bring down the size. Make it really soft. Think about where this scene is taking place too. It's underwater, so the water is going to help diffuse that light. So it's really going to be a lot different than let's say like a desert scene where that light is going to be really harsh and strong. So we'll just do a little bit here. Again, it doesn't take that much to sell the scene. Give a little light to our hermit crab. And also thinking about, you know, like really how does, how does water work? How does an underwater scene actually look like? You're gonna have more light coming towards the surface, and then less and less on the bottom. So you probably want to have a little bit darker light. There. Maybe some of the bubbles are catching that. Keeping in mind that sort of cohesive story, my unexpected element doesn't quite make sense in order to make this a cohesive piece. So I'm going to make sure that my unexpected layer, which is coming out of a cave into this magical wonderland, is actually still on top. And I can always make a couple little adjustments to that too. And the great thing about this is you can just play and see what it looks like. If you don't like it, you can delete it, even at the very end.
Now that looks like they all belong together just from getting some light. And let's bring in a little bit of shadow to really drive the point home. That's too light. The light here, so the shadow is going to be harsh on this side. A little bit more shadows on this end. Make that eel a little bit like it's floating. And there you go. Now it really sells the story that it's underwater. I'm going through a cave and it's a beautiful day outside and it's just illuminating my underwater scene just from something simple like that.